So what what are you sending there? Uh, I was thinking. Um, we're just gonna talk about like, for example, what what do you make your students read? And you're gonna tell you're gonna give me some examples and stuff. So, and then I'm gonna give you another example, and maybe you want maybe you'll want to share uh, the screen, the text, and the you know the audio that I use. Or, okay. I was okay. thinking of, of. All right. Of, we're already live. Uh, yes, we're already live. But hold on! Don't 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 be scared. I'm just sharing this. All right, guys. Good morning. Thank you very much for being here. Today is is a beautiful. Today is a beautiful day here where I live, and I know where Nissan lives too. You know, so uh, we're just having some coffee and water. What are you drinking, Nissan? Coffee. Coffee. I don't drink coffee. I'm too young for that. Right. You know, and but I'm drinking water. You know, <laughs> so. You know, I really enjoy being here, and I really thank everybody that's showing up there. So leave your comments here in the comment box so we can read them. All right? So this is a live podcast for teachers and advanced students, right? And today we have a really interesting topic. Nisan came up with the idea of talking about reading and what our students read, you know? So I guess that's a uh, I, – I guess reading is, for me – Reading is a way of people um, learning vocabulary, spelling, and seeing how English is applied. More than listening, I think reading is the first step that will teach you how to how to apply your English. You know, I have a student that's, uh, that says, that I told him, man, if you want to improve your vocabulary, if you want to improve your English, you have to read. And then he said, well, but audiobooks are okay. And I said, yes, for, for listening and for, for to a certain extent, yeah, audiobooks will do it too. But I think uh, sometimes when you listen, you misinterpret what you listen and you end up speaking wrong anyway. So when, and, and when you read, it's harder for you to misinterpret what you're actually seeing. So I don't know. That was my theory. I don't even know. I, I haven't even uh, thought about it that about that really deeply. But but I think I had a point. You know. So what's your approach on that, Nizan? Good morning. Good morning, man. Uh, thank you for having me. No, you make a great point. Um, when I, you know, when, when I thought of the title, like, hey, we should talk about reading and fluency. Uh, the reason why I didn't uh, say uh, f uh, reading fluency, but, you know, reading and fluency. Right. Is precisely because I thought of this uh, usual situation where students ask, uh, uh, teacher, can reading help me become uh, a fluent speaker? Like, Right, and 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 that's uh, that's what I wanted to 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 elaborate on. All right, so a little bit. So but for, 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 first, yeah. I want to comment on what you said. I think I think audiobooks are important as long as you also have the text, because uh, mm. because of what you said, like you can misinterpret the the the, the sounds that you're receiving. And a, a way to help you learn vocabulary, improve your spelling, and also become aware of, of how the syntax is, is, is developing is by seeing the text right in front of you. Because uh, if, whether you're listening or actually trying to form sentences, you know, in, even if it's a small conversation, uh, when you're starting, uh, it's difficult for you to 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 you know to link the elements in order to form sentences because by the time you're halfway through your sentence you already forgot the first words you said right you don't have a visual help you, know? you don't have a you don't have a guy a visual guide and right. i think i think that's why audiobooks with the text or even you know you know watching 
you know, movies or sitcoms or whatever with subtitles help you a lot because because now you can see how the how how language is being formed. I think audiobooks and listening any listening um, aid that you uh, that you try to use will help you on intonation. That is true. Intonation will you will catch intonation by listening to the language. Yes, I, I, I agree. I agree to a certain to a certain point. However, I think like what you're saying is really important. Uh, structuring your thoughts, structuring your ideas, and seeing how other people do it, and um, how other people you know express. I I think that that will help you. Okay, so um, you have a material there that you wanted to share or something? Yeah, I like to use um, short stories or poems because, uh, you know, some teachers recommend uh, like books, but books, uh, how many pages are we talking about? Like, mm -hmm. uh, like maybe perhaps it's too much input. And what you need to do is, you know, to take it slow and, and, and not, not putting too much pressure on you right so short stories sometimes are you know it can be a a, a a page or it can be five six pages but but they're they're more um concise e e easier to digest right right and and a way to 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 uh, kill two birds with one stone uh, um, this is like also trying to improve your your conversational fluency uh, mm. while reading is uh, working with texts that emulate a conversational setting. Oh yes, of course, I agree. Dialogues and conversations and and stuff like that. So uh, if if you have a if you have a, an audio uh, source. Uh, you know, it, it'll help you even more because now if you have any questions about uh, pronunciation or, or intonation or whatever, you can always refer to the to the to the audio source. Uh, so I usually try to uh, select short stories that uh, uh, that also have a YouTube video with somebody reading it and mm. perhaps perhaps even different people reading it so you can become familiar with different accents or whatever and mm, neil gaiman okay. is uh it's an author that i uh, use often because he has a bunch of youtube videos where he reads his poems or he reads his short stories in front of oh. an audience poems would be hard no uh, poems sometimes are hard so i try to keep them like sh the, the, like the ones that are really short and uh, in this case bruce holland rogers i also use it often uh, the only downside to Bruce Holland Rogers is that uh, you can't really find too too many audios out there, uh, but but he does have some. But what is Wattpad? Is a uh... it's some website where you can find some uh, free online books. You just have to you know create uh, an account or link full it. books. Uh, yeah. Ah, oh, okay. I mean, I don't read that much so i don't use it that much but i use it for for some oh start writing that material. means that you can write a book here yeah i think so yeah i'm not that familiar with the with the with, the, with its features but oh. but the one i sent you it's one that i enjoy uh, using because um uh, this uh this short story it's called periwinkles which is you know the the, the little snails that you find in your garden and right. uh, it has some uh, uh, good vocabulary. Some of the words are might be a little too sophisticated for the everyday life, but uh, it's two people and and uh, talking. Mm. And one of them is uh, is trying to 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 tell the other one a parable. Okay. But the other one keeps interrupting and asking questions. So the interaction is really interesting. And when you work with the uh, uh, with this text in a, you know, with a student, it's always fun to, to you know, besides helping them out with the pronunciation of certain words or the meaning of the vocabulary, also to try to help them uh, put their personality mm. in, in, in the text. So that's why I wanted us to try it 
I wanted us to try it. I wanted like to read it. Yeah, yeah. Like you'll okay. be you'll be a character, and I'll be the other character. So who am I? Number one, number two. Or well, it's, it's only two characters, right? Yeah. So perhaps, uh, yeah. Which let do you see. recommend? Uh, let me just go to the text Good. because I need to see the original source. I you I don't. I have it. You're, have not, it. you're not looking at it. I have it. Not yet. Well, but in the Streamyard, it's uh, the the it's too small. But uh, no, you actually. can go full screen. Go to the bottom corner. Go to the bottom right corner, and you go full screen. I can tell. Oh, you learn something every day. Where 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 is it though? Right. Uh, right bottom corner. Right bottom corner. No, or actually, I have, bottom I have, right corner. I have, I have the chat. Maybe. Maybe that option is only available to you because no, have... it is to you. Look, yeah, right, uh, bottom right. Uh, I have the chat and sent. I don't have no, well, uh, okay, 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 but not the whole page on, on the on the screen, yeah, you know, right where where the ticker is going. Oh, right, 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 right. I get it, 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 I get it. yeah, I have it now, yeah, okay, sure. okay. We have a comment here. Let's read it before we start. Good morning. What would you recommend to a non-native speaker which is reading something and you find a word or phrase you don't know or understand to stop and find the meaning or to continue and look for it after reading? It's a good question. It's a great question. If I, uh, uh, yeah, as I've said before, if if uh, if you're reading. Uh, in order to catch like the whole idea or the gist of the text, if it's a book, for example, some of stu some students like to read like Harry Potter. Yeah, you might you might want to continue and just uh, maybe take notes of the of the of the words that that you feel are really important to the content, because if you're stopping like every two sentences, uh, it's gonna take you forever. You could do that, but. Uh, but that's why that's why I, I I always recommend short readings. Like if you're dealing with a page or two, mm. yes, yes, I would go for stopping every time that you find a new word. Actually, that's the way I do it with uh, with with students. Like yeah. every word you don't understand, we'll pause right there. Like don't continue reading; just stop right there, because many people won't do that. Like many people just you know they will just continue reading and just take uh, you know take the whole thing for granted and think that they understood everything right and they didn't you know? right what i did when i was uh learning what i did was if i was reading a book i might not stop on each vocabulary word or phrase i would try to understand the whole thing however it was hard for me at times because yeah i lost information i assumed i had understood but really i hadn't so it confused me. So I I would go for for what Nissan said. I would go for for uh, shorter readings and then try to understand every single word and every single phrase. However, if you think you are gonna read once and you got it, well, probably later. But I think you're gonna have to read it a couple of times, probably three times. First time to skim through it and detect some vocabulary. Boom, you write it down. Right. S second time you go and actually read it and try to understand it in context. And then third time just to make sure you understood it. So probably what 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 you want to do is read uh, an article at least three times. You know that's that's what I do with my students three times. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Edgar. So we have we have other comments. Thank we have you, Brenda Yanez. Good morning. I don't know what your Brenda. comment is, Brenda, but whatever your comment is, I love it. <laughs> we appreciate yeah. it. We appreciate <laughs> so, it. Maybe yeah. it's just a ghost comment. Okay. Edgar says thanks. Thank you, Edgar, for being Thank there. You, Edgar. All right. So what well, we're gonna go on and how's and that? Uh, uh, how's that proverb go? Assumption is the mother of all mistakes. I was gonna go for a bad word, but the root of our evil. No, that's supposed to be money. No, I just, uh, I'm just butchering quotes here. All right, so yeah, let's do it, man. Let's have fun. This is the way I work with students. So I tell them, okay. Uh, and some words uh, might be new to you because they are quite peculiar. I mean, I know that the first time I read it, like I didn't know like about four, like four words. I went like, what the I hell? already detected one. 
Yeah. So in this case, you know, we'll be it will be like uh, emulating that teacher student interaction, I guess. So let me let me just go skim through it real quick. What's this word? Pious. 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 Uh, yeah, what does it, pious mean? Ah, hard to explain, but it means to be fearful of God. It's a religious term. Piadoso okay. Would be ah, word. okay. I got it. I got it. All right, so let's go on for man. I could read quick, but not that quick. But uh, that one right there. Uh, uh, they didn't find him. I'm sure you might find a word or two there. Beneath? No, but undiscovered. No, I think they would have a look around. Uh, Maggot transformed uh, soil. Mice nod in uh, like like uh, like nod. Yeah, no, not like uh, what what rodents do. You know, like they munch on things. And right, right, right. Not at a skeleton in time. For for one called sprouted from. Uh, I think I got it. Yeah, I think you do. I think I got it. Unless you come up with uh, thistles, I don't know what thistles is. Exactly, because it's a plant, and who knows? Uh, you know, I don't know uh, how plants are named. Uh, this plant, this is a, this is a like a, a flower. Like, if there's a, a a biologist out there like listening to me, I'm sorry. I guess it's a, a, a it's some sort of plant. It's a flower, uh, but it's full of like thorns. Okay. Like it's it's, an, it's an ugly. Well, for me, it's, well, it's supposed to be. Bread, am I now? Brenda, I know. Yeah, it's a it's, wow. It's a foreboding, foreboding. What? Like a bad, like abandonment, like a feeling of despair. Well, how do you say it? Foreboding. Foreboding. All right. Yeah. Like, 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 like forgetting. Like abandoning. Like for. That, all right. That, that, yeah. Like, uh, like feeling, uh, feeling of I guess loneliness and okay this, this uh, despair. All right, I got it. I think I got it. Great. For body, you said, right? Yeah. Just in case I get I get to read it. Okay. So, so pious. The, that this is the pronunciation for pious. pious. There you go. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, so who starts? If, uh, if if anybody out there, students or teachers, detect any mistake we make, uh, you can put it on the comments because you know we're human. And uh, I'm not. Well, actually, not human. But... I'm not. Well, you pretend to be quite well. Let's uh, let's do this. So you pick your character. There's there's the annoying guy that keeps interrupting, and then there's this other guy who is trying to you know say something smart, like trying to educate the other one. So which character you? And then we can switch roles. I mean, okay, I might be the the serious dude. Okay, so then you start. Okay, here's a parable. Tell me a riddle instead. Your parables never make sense. Mm -hmm. They do if you listen carefully, not just to what I say, but to what I don't say. That's a poor excuse. What's this parable about? Good and evil. All right, I listen. Okay. Once there was a man who was good, and he died. Wait a minute. What do you mean by good? Was he pious? I'm not sure. Then how, how was he good? What was his moral foundation? Well, his goodness might have, have had a philosophical basis rather than a religious one. What did he do that was good? He was generous. Where he saw people in need, he gave what he could afford. I, I know people that who give nothing at all because they believe they can't afford it. Well, he also forgave injuries uh, when it was reasonable to forgive them. So turn the other cheek, but only when it's reasonable? Yes, if a stranger is stabbing you, your child, do you say at once, I forgive you? Do you offer up your other child? Of course not. Goodness isn't simple, but he was good. When he died, he happened to die alone in a forest. Wait, if he was good... Oh, oh my God, I need my glasses. Wait, if he was good, why didn't he die in the company of those who loved him? It didn't happen that way. He died alone beneath a tree, and his body laid undiscovered. They would have looked for him. They didn't find him. Fallen leaves and his remains, moth and maggot transformed his clothes into soil. Mice nodded at his skeleton. In time, periwinkles sprouted. 
from the earth that he had once been this good man, there arose a hundred of flower, a hundred blue flowers. Hmm. A traveler would come across that place and feel at peace. Perhaps. Now at about the same time, there was about a man who was evil. And when he died... Evil how? Uh, the opposite of the first. Greedy. Yes. But evil. I suppose he might have been a rapist. Whose parable is this? I want specifics. He was evil, and he happened to die alone in a forest. The same forest? Yes. How did he die? Was he stoned to death? Alone, I said. He should have been executed. I didn't have it didn't happen that way. He died alone and his body laid under undiscovered. You can bet that no one went looking for him. The worst tires have their admirers. In any case, no one found him. In time, the earth reclaimed him. Periwinkle sprouted. Not periwinkles. It should be thistles. It wasn't. It was periwinkles again. This place wouldn't feel the same, though. A traveler would come across this carpet of flowers and feel foreboding. He might, or he might feel at peace. But it shouldn't be the same flowers, the same mood in both places. Can you stand over a grave and know the character of a stranger whose name is on the stone? Of course not, but this is a parable. It's supposed to illustrate something. It does. Now, tell me that wasn't fun. Yes, of course. Sure. It's fun, right? And then after that, after after you do that, then uh, you can start uh, discussing on the content. Like, hey, so what do you think that parable illustrates? Uh, what do you think that parable illustrates? Uh, what, what do I they, think it is strange? Yeah, what are they talking about? What, 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 what was the guy trying to comment on? Uh -huh. All right, that everything happens for a reason. I don't know. Could Man, be. I'm not that bright for this. No, the thing is that the, the, it's the thing is that you were focused on reading, you know, of, of, of pull through reading. And uh, so you weren't too focused on the content. This is this always happens, but right. uh, when you switch roles. You, you give you give the student the chance to now pay a little more attention to the content because they already went through the pronunciation details and the you know so you want to switch roles now we could do that so you can you can try to be the annoying guy I mean I know that's okay. gonna be really hard for you well that, that, <laughs> might, that <laughs> might suit my personality a bit more you know but I did a good job being the serious dude yeah, 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 yes, of yeah, course. Uh, Nisa needs glasses. <laughs> yes, yes, I actually, I'm actually supposed to wear them, but uh, you know, I'm, I procrastinate. That's who I. That's what I do. <laughs> okay, it says uh, I'm in Tlaxcala with my family, but here, happy to hear you. Uh, thank you, Brenda. We're happy to to be there with you, and with We're you. Happy family. to have you. We're happy to have yeah. you. Okay, Edgar to Cortina, I like it. It's a great thing to do with students and practice and practice oral skills alone reading. Nice. Yes, I love it. I love it. Thank you. So as we switch roles, and now I try to uh, now I try to be the, the the smart ass, and he tries to Cam tries to be the annoying one. Uh, you can you, you you guys can comment on on what you think the parable illustrates. Like maybe you can give us uh, an idea of, okay, of what they are talking about. So let's uh, let's do this. Okay, hold on. Let me, okay, you got it. Let me. Okay, yeah, go ahead. All right. Uh, so here's a parable. Tell me a riddle instead. Your parables never make sense. They do if you listen carefully, not just to what I say, but to what I don't say. That's a poor excuse. What is this parable about? Good and evil. All right, I listen. Once there was a man who was good, and when he died... Wait a minute. What do you mean by good? Was he pious? I'm not sure. Then how was he good? What was his moral foundation? 
His goodness might have had a, a philosophical basis rather than a religious one. What did he do? What was good? He was generous. Where he saw people in need, he gave what he could afford. <laughs> I know people who give nothing at all because they believe they can't afford it. Well, he also forgave injuries when it was reasonable to forgive them. So, turn the other cheek, but only when it's reasonable? Yes. If a stranger is stabbing your child, do you say at once, I forgive you? Do you offer up your other child? Of course not. Goodness isn't simple, but he was good. And when he died, he happened to die alone in a forest. Wait. If he was good, why didn't he die in the company of those who loved him? It didn't happen that way. Um, he died alone beneath a tree and his body lay undiscovered. They would have looked for him. They didn't find him. Uh, fallen leaves hid his remains. Moth and maggot transformed his clothes into soil. Mice gnawed at his skeleton. In time, periwinkles sprouted. From the earth that had once been this good man, there arose a hundred blue flowers. A traveler would come across that place and feel at peace. Perhaps. Now, at about the same time, there was a man who was evil. And when he died... Evil how? The opposite of the first. Greedy? Yes. But evil, I suppose he might have been a rapist. Whose parable is this? I want specifics. He was evil. And he happened to die alone in a forest. The same forest? Yes. How did he die? Was he stoned to death? Alone, I said. He should have been executed. It didn't happen that way. He died alone and his body lay on the scope. You can bet that no one went looking for him. The worst tyrants have their admirers. In any case, uh, no one found him. In time, the earth reclaimed him. Periwinkle sprouted. Not periwinkles. It should be thistles. It wasn't. It was periwinkles again. This place wouldn't feel the same, though. A traveler wouldn't, would come across this carpet of flowers and feeling foreboding. He might, or he might feel at peace. But it should be the same flowers, the same mood in both places. Can you stand over a grave and know the character of the stranger whose name is on the stone? Of course not, but this is a parable. It's supposed to illustrate something. It does, you little you know uh, okay so every time like and and if it's a one on one you know you switch roles and 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 it's interesting to see how uh, if the students having fun they actually try to give a little bit of their personality to the character and if it's a a group class that uh, you got four or five six people it's interesting when you when you pair them up to see how uh, you know each person gives the each line a different feeling, a different right relish. It's an acting class too. Sort of, yeah. Because hey, Edward you know, Cortina is asking, where can you find those readings? Is it a website? Yeah, uh, yeah well, I guess you can just Google Bruce Holland Roger short story and you can find them in separate websites. That's how I've done it. But in this particular website, Wattpad, you can find this the, the whole book which has not only this story but other amazing stories by this guy um you can click on the continuing this, this. next part no no no. Uh, uh. The top left where it says bruce holland roger short stories yes. you can click yeah there you go uh it's it has the the bullfrog and his shadows it's some sort of fable uh, the dead boy uh, at your window. It says it your windows, but I think the original name is at your window. It's uh, it's a, it's some sort of some sort of a creepy love story, which is uh, it's really good. It's a little lo it, it, it's longer. It's longer than this one. Mm. Uh, Strange is a crazy story. Dinosaur is about a boy. Dinosaur. It's actually three paragraphs. Dinosaur is three paragraphs, so it's also really really useful. Uh, so yeah, in this website you can find. Okay, maybe those. maybe I have a question for for you, bro. Um, of your, one of the four skills, yeah. Would you say you have um work 
more on? I think listening because it was uh, where I, 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 it was, it was the, the skill I found more difficult to, mm. to get a hold on. Yeah. And what do you get from listening a lot? I think, uh, uh, I don't know if we've talked about this before, but uh, for for example, uh, the the words that are pronounced clearly in right. any accent right. are, are the content words, you know, nouns and adjectives, verbs and adverbs. And, and when you're learning the language, uh, you know, you become pretty familiar with, 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 you know, nouns and adjectives and verbs and adverbs because that's the, 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 the lists of vocabulary that you usually receive from books and teachers are full of those. But the function words, prepositions, pronouns, uh, aux auxiliars, uh, you know, all these connectors, uh, are on one hand, they're tricky. And uh, on the other hand, they are not always pronounced clearly. Right. So maybe it's not your listening skill. It's just that they are not pronounced clearly. And the only way for you to figure out which preposition or which auxiliary or which pronoun is, the person is using is to become familiar with the sounds, you know, the reduction of the sounds. Right. And and to have a, a good sense of, of syntax and grammar so you can also try to put the pieces together, you know. All right. And how has reading helped you or how has reading enhanced the listening skill that you have practiced? Uh, precise, precisely by, 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 by uh, being my, my, my visual guide on, on syntax, you know, of, of, for example, uh, let me think of a practical example of this. Uh, when people say, um, um, so do you work, uh, do you work until uh, like very late at night? And somebody says, well, depends on the day. What? Depends on the day. So if you're thinking in Spanish, for example, you say, ah, depende de, depends of, but that's not what I heard. You know, but if you're familiar with the uh, with on, which is a preposition you use with depend, right? Then then the the person is not really pronouncing on clearly, but you know de de depend and on are, it's a, a collocation; they go together, right? And reading does that for you. You know, they 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 map the they they, they can map the language for you to. Okay, and even though it's not a topic, but I want to know the question about writing. How does that uh, wrap everything up, or how does that do you write? Does did that help? Yes, I think it helps a lot because, uh, like when, when when you do this, no, like when you're talking, you have to think and talk in real time. You don't really have much time to think about what you're saying <laughs> or right you so react that, no you, exactly you, you react. snap it, exactly it takes it takes it takes practice to actually come up with an idea and 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 and, and convey it uh, in in real time but when you write uh, you have the chance to take your time you have the chance of you know choosing your words and 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 your syntax and yeah. the new ones and the new ones that you want to give to your to right. your discourse right so yeah i think writing uh, so there you go there you go all right in all in, right. in in, in what, what you said in structuring your thoughts organizing right. your ideas writing. thinking thinking yep. in general yep. Yep. so and uh, okay and uh, how about reading out loud does that is that different than reading silently? Well, I think if you're trying to try to if you're trying to work on your 
skills, all of them, like conversational skills and, and you know, or pronunciation, whatever. I think that if uh, if you're going to read, you might as well read out loud. Okay. Because you need because you need to because because uh, it's not just about absorbing the input. You have to produce the sounds. Now, if you're living in a country that is uh, uh, is not an English speaking country, uh, you're not going to have uh, many opportunities to interact with people in in the language that you're learning. So when are you going to be producing the, the, the sounds? Oh, I, I, I don't have anyone to talk to. But yeah, but uh, you can't just sit there and wait for somebody to come along so you can practice the sounds and the words. You have to do it at least, you know, uh, sitting in your room with a, with a short story. And how story. productive? I mean, this is a tricky question. I don't take it the wrong way. So how productive would it be to read if you don't really know the intonation or the pronunciation? I mean, the right intonation or pronunciation. Because no, this is a question it. students have asked me. Like, but taking it the wrong way, man. I'm, I'm, out, I'm out of here. Why, how can you say that? <laughs> no, no, but you know what I'm saying? Because I've had that, <laughs> yeah. that question from students, and I say, well, yes. you have a point. Oh, yes, yes. That, that's why I always try to uh, choose material that also has an audio. Uh, right out there yeah exactly like, like for example this one that we used uh i use it with intermediate bands people that already have a, a a good listening skills but whenever i do it with uh no better said uh, i'm 65 70 percent of the reading material i use has a youtube video out there all right So, so every time that they're reading and they, they wonder how something is pronounced, they can always go and listen to somebody pronounce it. So is reading for all levels? I think it should be. Not all, not all systems think so, but I think reading should be. I think, but, you know, you have to grade your readings, right? Like, for example, the, the, the material we used right now, uh, you might not want to use that with A2s. You could but it could take you oh, all right two hours right 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 yeah no Maybe. that's <clears throat> that's why man it, it looks like i work for interchange but i like those readings because even though they're not um they're not completely uh they're not they're not really easy i mean i mean they always have some words i mean how can i put this into words i mean i know they're not really programmed like perfectly for for the students level they always have some two or three extra words that they never taught you know that they that the students were never you know exposed to so you got to teach them vocabulary you know he, uh they still have you know they still match their levels You know, you know, they're um, so I think they, they go easy to 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 hard. I think the last interchange should be harder, you know, but yes, you know. yes. I, I have been working with the passages and yeah, I mean, after you've completed the first uh, four levels, yeah, passages should 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 be should try to be more challenging because you're supposed to be B2. By yeah. the time you're you're in passages, yeah, you're supposed to be on your way to C1. You're supposed to be. Ah, uh, right, right. So yeah, it, it might be uh, too easy for 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 B twos, but I think for from A ones to B ones, I think it's a great material, man. I, I I'm gonna start collecting royalties from these people. <laughs> yeah, you should actually try to try to get some commissions. The, uh, yeah, and 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 do let me say that uh, it happens a lot that students go uh, over the four books like this, like they 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 finish them in in like like seven months, boom. So mm, they're really? suppo they're supposed to be yeah some of them. So they're supposed to be you know B twos, but they haven't really worked on other skills. So what passages do is it, it helps them review all of the topics that they that, uh, they, that, they, that they ran through. 
and uh, the, a year before. So the thing that, so the fact that it's not that challenging uh, might help the majority of students that haven't really had enough hours practicing uh, competencies now. Okay, okay, that's good. All right, so okay, today, uh, well, we're running out of time, but today was really interesting reading. I like, I, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I used to read way more before. I don't read as much now. I, I think I write more and listen more than, than I read, but I think uh, most of the vocabulary, um, I mean, when I, I mean, reading gave me vocabulary and because you have, you have um, ideas of the vocabulary when you hear it, like you say, oh, maybe that might mean that, but when you read it, you prove it. So I think reading puts, uh, makes you, you know, touch ground, you know, right. when, of, of your English. So reading is always good. And I think reading is good since day one. Since day one, I like I said, first you need to know the sounds. Yes, that's true. Before you ever attempt to read English, I mean to learn English, you know, uh, learn the sounds. And when, when you do that, you know, I guess you need to try to read from the hand, uh, you know, of a, of a teacher. You know, if you can't, well, like Nisa said, YouTube videos, you know, but but reading, it's always, uh, reading is always, uh, you know, a, a great tool. You know, and I think reading and fluency is very, very, very connected, you know. So anyway, so uh, Nissan, give me your last comment. Oh, yeah, about Ed Edgar's comment uh, and, and the audio uh, material that goes with readings. Uh, we've talked about Youglish. Like, I'm not getting any commission from Youglish either, but if you have a text and... Uh, you, you can't find the audiobook or anything out there. You can go to Juglish and you can type the sentence, not even mm. just the word, the whole sentence. And Juglish will go and, you know, look up hundreds of videos of people using that same sentence or idiomatic expression or whatever. So you can, so you can see how, so you can listen, so you can hear how it's pronounced. Juglish. Can you read uh, Edgar's last? Yeah, it was a, a great streaming. Uh, got some ideas to work with my students. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Edgar, for joining us. Thank you very much. Okay, and uh, Nissan was talking about Uglish. Yes. You know, so cookies, Uglish is this. Uglish, no, in, like instead of English, you say Uglish. And that's great, man, because you look, for example, give me a sentence. Um. It's okay, give me a sentence. All right, oh, there she go. <laughs> you know, 67. I uh, scroll down and you'll find its caption. Someone give me a first word. What's the first word of their sentence? And right. well, I, I'm not sharing audio, Open but you are. You are. <laughs> hey, it's even better. All right, oh, I am. All right, so he already said that. And if you scroll down, what? Uh, you can see the you can see the it's the subtitles, it's caption. So oh yeah, know, here. So you, so you know exactly what they're saying. Oh, nice. And then here, here you have other. Ah, okay, okay. If you serve me and don't give up, eventually I'll release you from this life sentence to impact the world with the gospel. Okay. God other people. Uh, incarnation. Let me give you a two sentence version of it. So we've all heard of MRIs. MRIS. Uh, Man, Euglish is still really really interesting so yeah edgar thanks for for being here with us okay we're um we're out guys thank you very much i we will see each other next friday okay hope oscar cruz is back i was, gonna, with I was us. gonna say i was yeah. gonna say that <laughs> and of course we will have uh guests next week okay so thank you very much today we don't have a conversation club but don't worry about it you know we, we can talk Anyway. Next Friday, we'll catch okay. Up. Next Friday, okay. All right, guys, thank you very much. Have a great week, and you too, Edgar. Thank you. Bye, peace. peace.